Mario Tennis Aces can be pretty tough when it comes to tournament time, and while the game is inherently fun, it's a whole lot more fun when you're winning. And that's why today we're bringing you our seven top tips to get better and be successful at Mario Tennis Aces. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here. We have been playing tennis nonstop, and I think it just speaks to the quality of this game that both of us are saying that. We're kind of addicted to this new Switch title, and even though it's just the weekend tournament, the full release is a couple weeks away, and I think we're both blown away by how much fun and how quality this new Mario Sports title is. Absolutely, but like you mentioned... It's extra fun if you're winning. Nobody likes to be unsuccessful at anything they do, <laughs> and that goes double for this game. So I feel like we should just get started with the tips here. We have seven of them, and I'll start first here, Zach, and we'll say don't be afraid to use the trick shots. I was very, very intimidated by them at first because if you mess up one of them, you are going to get scored on. That's pretty much the reality of it. But once you understand the spacing and the patterns a little bit more, I feel like getting these done is very advantageous because it helps you fill your meter out uh, way quicker and you probably want to keep filling that thing up to have your super and to be able to slow down time, uh, things of that nature. So once I was able to get the trick shots mastered, I felt like my skill like level like definitely like leveled up a couple notches. Absolutely. So these are accomplished by either flicking the right stick in the direction of the ball or double tapping X and moving the left stick in the direction of the ball. And I initially read these as a last ditch effort, but in fact, they can be used far more often. So once you start incorporating trick shots, as Gabe mentioned, into your regular arsenal, you will be building energy, you'll be reaching hard to get balls, and your character will just look pretty cool, whether it's Waluigi doing his weird pseudo moonwalk or Rosalina spinning and pirouetting around the court. Uh, this is a great way to up your skill level um, and build that energy meter, which is mission critical. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the star on the court is for more than just zone shots. Many of you are probably familiar with the zone shot where you're inside the star, you click right bumper or right trigger, and you activate one of those gyro uh, very fast, very powerful shots. But the star marker is actually used for much more. When you hit the ball within the star marker, uh, you get added perks no matter what kind of shot you're using. So if you're using a flat purple shot, it gives a massive speed increase. If you're using a red top speed, shot, the ball will bounce higher. If you're using a blue slice shot, the ball has a tighter uh, curve and will move more. If you're using a drop shot accomplished by pressing down the left stick and X, the ball will drop earlier and bounce less. And if you're using a lob shot, just the regular X press, uh, the ball will fly higher, be harder to reach, um, and even curve some. So being in that star uh, is advantageous always and it's something that you want to pay attention to even if you don't have the meter or the intention of utilizing a zone shot. Absolutely. This one here is a little bit more of an advanced tip, but once you play a, a few dozen matches here, you're going to want uh, better ways that, you know, it's small little uh, things that provide just slight advantages, but those do add up and they do end up making you a better all-around player. I'm yeah. And it, it's amazing how quickly like you start to really utilize more than just like the traditional okay i'm just gonna press a i'm just gonna press a i'm just gonna press a and then all of a sudden okay i'm gonna start incorporating the flat shot and the and the the, the lobs and then okay drop shot becomes very freaking valuable and that's what i want to move into for tip number three which is to practice and use drop shots because they can be incredibly awesome especially when fully charged that ball just dies on a dime um, and if you're playing a character that is back at the baseline or you are able to push them back uh, with a stronger shot a fully charged shot that drop shot is pretty much the best thing you've got going yeah i, I actually utilize this quite a bit and i <laughs> i was very confused when i saw this at first i was like oh how are you doing that i did play it through the tutorial but it, it's something that i kind of just skimmed but just playing online the the learning curve is, is very fair and you see certain things you look up how to do them and, and this is something that i'm utilizing pretty much on every match when i can yeah it's it's fantastic it's also very frustrating when done to you because you're like running up and uh, drop shots are are both my arch nemesis and also my best friend. Uh, number four is to charge or double tap everything. You know, charge shots seem to be something uh, at first blush to be used, like, oh, when you want to get a really extra good one in. But once you start advancing beyond the first round and beyond the first few matches, you'll realize that you need to be charging 
almost every shot. Or you can double tap, and double tap is a less powerful shot than a fully charged shot, but it also is basically an instant charge. So if you're not able to have enough time uh, to charge up, you can double tap your shots. It also helps on serves. But basically, if you want to be successful in advancing to those third, fourth, and maybe even final rounds, you're going to need to charge or double tap everything yeah and the timing on the charge is so critical uh, you know g given where you think the ball's gonna go things like that the movement and how, how far you got to get to get there you know going for that max charge is a little bit of a risky situation because yes you push your uh, opponent back a little bit and you have an opportunity to get uh, a shot in there that they probably won't be able to hit but if you mess that up it can also lead to you like losing uh that little round there so you want to be careful with this one Yes, indeed. Positioning is also critical, uh, but that's more of like an overarching thing of just making sure you're in the right spot and, and always, I say, uh, veer back towards the center of the court. Um, but you should also plan to use tip number five, which is to use your meter. Don't be afraid to burn that energy. Saving it doesn't seem to work out all that well. And in fact, utilizing your special shot first when both players have full meters is actually advantageous because if you use your special and they, then they counter with their special, it will push them back and it will be a weaker shot and you'll almost assuredly be able to counter the special special with a winner. Um, so if you have meter, use it. You can employ it to do zone shots. You can employ it for your super shot. Um, and you also can employ it to slow down time. Zone speed is something that I'm still getting uh, a full handle on, but it seems to be really, really good uh, to predict where the ball is going, even if used in short bursts. Yeah, zone speed is something that I generally try to avoid. And maybe that's a mistake on my part, but... I, I feel like that's like such a waste. I feel like anticipation is way better as far as that goes. But let's Zach, let's say both of us have a special. I'm always, 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 and you touched on it already. I want to use that first. Like you said, uh, the secondary special that the opponent uses is only a block shot. So then after that, I suggest just slowing down time. That is when I would do it and just figuring out where that's going to go and then just get like a little like uh, hidden. And they're so off base because they're like way back at that point. You basically mm -hmm. get a point instantly. Yeah, and some of the nuances of when to go for a block versus when to just let their special shot go by you, uh, that's important to know as well. Um, but we'll instead move to tip number six, which is to play to your character's strength. Finding characters that fit you is important, and then utilizing what they do best. So if you're a Rosalina player, making sure you employ that slice to get that extra curve on your shots. If you're a Bowser or a Spike player, really emphasizing those top spin, fully charged shots to push your opponent back. If you're Waluigi, you know that you won't be pushed back as much. You can cover a whole lot of ground. So kind of picking a character and maybe even settling with one or a style. There's only nine available in this tournament time demo, uh, but eventually finding sort of a character type and then sticking within that wheelhouse will probably be to your advantage and allow you to master and move forward uh, much more effectively. I've done this. Powerful characters seem to be my, my go-to. Spike is the character that I use the most for some reason. Right after that, Chain Chomp and Bowser. Uh, every powerful character in the game I feel very comfortable with. Uh, Bowser, we were you know talking uh, away from the video a little while ago, and you said Bowser's like so OP because he's so big and those uh, very, very powerful charge shots of his, like they push you back. It's hard to get away from that. So I personally think that... Uh, Power characters are the best for beginners like me that I'm not into tennis. I haven't really played Mario Tennis games very much in the past. So those are very easy to get a grasp of. Uh, the speedy characters I have a little bit more trouble with. I think that Toad and, and Yoshi, I, I I do not recommend if you're like a, a, a beginner like I am. Uh, Mario, clearly the best all-around character. But yeah, I, I would definitely say stick to one. Absolutely. Uh, and then this one's a little bit more nuanced, but be prepared to counter full charge shots. So this is something that is not really... Um, explained at the at the forefront, but if an enemy is, or an opponent is hitting a full charge at you, this is where the ball is like on fire, it's glowing, it's really coming at you hard and typically would be pushing you back. Um, if it is a max topspin, a max red shot, you want to counter that with a slice, with a blue shot. If they're shooting a max blue shot at you, a max slice, you want to counter that with a max red shot, a max topspin. And if they are shooting a max purple, a max flat at you, you want to counter that with flat purple as well. That's just a little triangle to remember um, that will be helpful so that you're not pushed back as much and so that you're able to place that ball uh, better and have more success when you're on the defensive. Yeah, and if you guys know this information here, 
you're going to be at an advantage because I feel like this isn't like widely known. So no. yeah, this is definitely going to give you a leg up. I've utilized this. We saw this over on a Reddit thread and, and like it was such a great bit of information. I've been using it ever since then and it actually works. So this is a good one. Absolutely. Uh, and then there's just like the whole positioning prediction, trying to play with your opponent that comes with time and practice and uh, hopefully more and more advanced tips will make themselves apparent as we and other players get deeper into this game. The full release is uh, not that far off. Just post E3 will absolutely have more coverage of the demo and of the full game. But to recap, don't be afraid to use your trick shots. They are worth more than just a latch stitch effort and they really help with the energy meter. Uh, the star marker is for more than just zone shots. It actually gives benefits if you hit the ball within. Make sure to practice and use drop shots. They can be incredibly effective and deadly. Uh, charge or double tap everything to take advantage of the skills that the game gives you. Use your meter and don't be afraid to use that special before your opponent. Play to your character's strengths, find a type that you like, and then really get good with what they do best. And then uh, remember the triangle to counter those full charges. Blue counters red, red counters blue, and purple counters purple. It's a pretty easy uh, little trifecta to remember. Let us know if you have any great tips of your own for us or for other players. We'd love to see them, and I'm sure everyone would appreciate that in the comments down below. So don't be shy. Share those over there. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and this superstar tennis game. Uh, we've got you covered at E3 as well, so follow us on Twitter and Discord for up-to-the-minute updates. And until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic weekend for myself and Gabe. Switch Force, out.